Hello students. This lecture is about sanitation and hygiene. It is in module 4 of your audit course disaster management. Emergencies and disasters can occur anywhere in the world. Which affect human health, people lives and infrastructure built to support them. Environmental health problems arising from emergencies and disasters are connected to their effects on physical, biological and social environment that pose a threat to human health, well-being and survival. Their shelter, water, sanitation, disease vectors, pollution, etc. The first global sorry the first goal of emergency response is to prevent outbreak of waterborne diseases which caused by malfunctioning water supply various point pollution of water resources and lack of sanitation facilities so the top priorities for immediate response are the provision of sufficient quantities of safe water arrangement of basic sanitation and promotion of hood hygiene behavior sanitation which means uh, to all conditions that create unhealthy conditions especially with regard to dirt and infection and specifically to the drainage and disposal for sewage and refuse from houses the WHO defines sanitation as the means of collecting and disposing of excreta and community liquid waste, waste in a hygienic way so as not to endanger the health of individuals and the community as a whole. So the basic objective of all sanitization, sanitation programs should be disposal of human excreta and community waste stages without endangering the public life. So disasters worsen the already inadequate sanitation situation. Certain specific measures must be adopted to improve the sanitation condition and to check any spread of epidemic in the aftermath of the disaster like flood, cyclone, earthquake etc. So this lecture deals with the available sanitation means and how to improve hygienic and sanitary conditions in the emergency situation. water sanitation and hygiene or wash the principle of wash are of tremendous concern in everyday life but can be highlighted during an emergency or disaster with systems potentially damaged access to water can be quite limited sanitation often comes to the forefront when displaced persons live in camp and especially in an overcrowded uh, situation. So the main objective of WASH programs in disaster is to reduce fecal oral transmission of disease and exposure to disease bearing vectors. The provision of WASH in healthcare facilities in emergencies is essential to protect human health and prevent outbreak. What is the importance of proper sanitation? 
during the planning of sanitation measures of any community safe disposal of excreta is of great importance for health and welfare of the concerned population sanitation is the highest priority for the local government over the years now to ensure basic health uh, for of the communities there is a direct relation between better provision of sanitation facilities safe drinking water supply and health care at the local level thus improved sanitation and safe drinking water supply should be the highest priority areas to achieve the target of improved health in the urban and rural areas of the countries keeping all these factors in mind sanitation must be given the highest importance by according uh, in the status of basic human need like food housing health etc the factors affecting the selection of suitable sanitation a large number of sanitation technologies are available the selection of most suitable option must be done after careful analysis of all the factors including cost acceptability operation and maintenance and locally available resources the various factors can affect the selection of the most suitable sanitation options are first water supply levels the amount of water supply available to an individual holds the key in proper selection of sanitation options option like the ventilated improved pit vip latrines are available where no water is required except for toilet hygiene this type of option must be utilized when water supply is insufficient say 22 25 liters per capita or daily if the water supply is up to 50 liters per capita daily the option like pour flush and vault toilets are the better options similarly if there are no constraints on water supply uh, cistern uh, flush toilets uh, with conventional sewer sewage or septic tank options are more suitable next factor is soil conditions local soil conditions play a very important role in determining the sanitation option except for those options which are completely contained over the ground like wall toilets and uh, bucket latrines soil stability and permeability are the two soil characteristics which determine the technology selection the impermeable soil conditions are least appropriate for a majority of the options available in case of uh, unstable soil the base of the pit must be lined as in the case of ventilated improved pit and uh, poor uh, flush toilet options so rocky soils are the most unwanted soil type for many uh, other sanitation options in the case of ground water table is within 1 meter below the ground surface various toilet options which require pit and are not possible at all next the factor is population density the population density is very important factor in determining the sanitation option in highly dense areas uh, we ip latrines are very it's not possible and uh, power flush toilets and uh, septic tanks with soap ways are feasible only under favorable conditions conventional sewage power uh, flush systems and uh, vault toilets are feasible for this type of conditions and other factors including cost uh, reuse potential environmental factors and institutional constraints must be given due consideration prior to finalizing the sanitation option for a particular locality different sanitation options are uh, first is simple pit latrines ventilated improved pit latrines pour flush latrines composting uh, latrines septic tank latrine and sewage system the hygiene and sanitation in post disaster situation
കമ്മ്യൂണിക്കബിൾ ഡിസീസ് ഓർ എപ്പിഡെമിക്സ് നീഡ് നോട്ട് ഒക്കെ ഇൻ ദ പോസ്റ്റ് ഡിസാസ്റ്റർ സിറ്റുവേഷൻ അൺലെസ് ലാർജ് നമ്പർ ഓഫ് പീപ്പിൾ ആർ ഇവാക്യുവേറ്റഡ് ഓർ ഡിസ്പ്ലേസ്ഡ് ഫ്രം ദയർ ഹോംസ് ആൻഡ് പ്ലേസ്ഡ് ഇൻ ദ ക്രൗഡഡ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻസാനിറ്ററി ക്യാമ്പ്സ് ദ സാനിറ്ററി ഡിഫിഷ്യൻസി ഇൻ ദീസ് ക്യാമ്പ്സ് മേ എക്സ്പോസ് ദ ഹാബിറ്റൻസ് of the camps to serious health hazard during their stay over there so the proper disposal of excreta and solid waste and vector control are of primary importance and require immediate attention some of the hygiene ways of managing public conveniences in post disaster situation are first is excreta disposal unsatisfactory disposal of excreta in is common after a natural disaster in the absence of proper sanitation measures any of the following may result like more flies or more breeding places unpleasant smells underground and groundwater contamination food contamination by flies and increasing uh, disease incidences due to the improper disposal of excreta the existing sewage system and treatment plan may be put out of service due to the natural disaster the earthquake may destroy the sewage network pumping station or treatment uh, plan similarly flood may block the sewage system and inundate the treatment plant immediately after any dis- disaster situation a detailed survey must be carried out and a damage report must be prepared based on this report various measures can be taken on high priority that is rapid repair of sewages uh, cleaning blocked sewages uh, disinfecting the treatment plant after dewatering format and making its operational temporary arrangement for discharging the sewage in temporary shelter and camps during the identification and development of the camp the first priority must be to uh, des- designate a specific area for people to excrete the method requires a very careful supervision and management to keep pollution at minimum men women and children must be encouraged to use it and prevent from uh, defecating in the open this area must be fenced and must be clean uh, by regular removal is created for the site and use of disinfections the solid uh, disposal uh, this accumulation of refuse or rubbish in a camp can constitute a health risk the rubbish either is buried burned or removed from the camp site to expedite expedite the disposal of refuse the separate containers for storing and collection of organic and inorganic waste must be utilized the refuse thus collected must be disposed of either through sanitary landfill incineration or burial so vector control the post disaster situation are most favorable uh, for rapid increase in the population of insects and rodents these can create a health risk and spoil and destroy large quantities of food items which are already scarce in disaster emergencies so the vector problem generally develops in densely crowded conditions where the sanitary sanitation conditions are inadequate the flies lice mites uh, mosquitoes and bed bugs are disease vectors that develop in uncontrolled environments so the vector control must follow a definite plan and program special team must be organized to control various types of vectors water and sanitation for emergency shelters includes assess immediate 
population needs and available supply protect upstream water supplies and wells and treat all surface water as polluted pump pump supplies to storage tanks to be used as a basis for a more developed distribution system provide basic collection storage and treatment facility for protected sources prevent indiscriminate defecation through rapid provision of facilities provide safe disposal of excreta and refuse controlling rodents and pests integrate hygiene promotion within the community consider foundations for long term infrastructure and ensure their implementation will not be impeded in the future in particular ensure continued safety of local water resources which may be scarce so the hygiene and sanitation assume great importance in health management in disaster situations sanitation can be described as the means of collecting and disposing of excreta and community waste in a hygienic way keeping in mind the different areas their water supply levels soil condition and population density a proper planning of sanitary system should be done adopting any sanitation option should be guided by these conditions as this will greatly minimize the problem of epidemics during or after the disasters however when the existing sanitation system gets disrupted rapid repair should be done and temporary arrangements for discharging sewage should be made adequate precaution and sanitary measures should be taken in the temporary shelters and relief camps these are the references thank you for listening